Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a new day, a new day that the Lord has given us, and we can rejoice and be glad. I'm so glad that um, uh, we have this wonderful moment together to be able to share with you a word from the Lord. Today, we want to encourage you. Yes, the Impact Ministries wants to encourage you today to live and to not die, to live and to live with hope, to live with hope that God has given us a, a great expression of love, um, an expression of love that allows us to live. And that being Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His beloved son, Jesus. He gave his son, Jesus, to die for our sins. To pay the price for the uh, wages of sin is death. So to do that righteousness. Do that which is right according to God, according to the word of God, according to God, that the wages of sin is death. And so he gave his son to die for our sins. And in doing so, made it possible for us to have a right to the tree of life, to live, to live, to have a right relationship with God, to have peace with God, in God, through Christ. Amen. And our relationship with God. And this is what God has set up. And this is according to the word of God. But I want to share with you today. Because I know that in this life. There's a lot of hardship. I know in this life. That it's hard to rejoice and be glad in this day. Because I know. From what I hear in the news. And what I've experienced in life. And what I you know gather from friends and people. Uh, who share things uh, uh, around the world that there's some hardship and, and one of the greatest hardships has to do with death and so I want to share a word with you a word of encouragement about death and now I don't want you to think it's just physical death but death let's just say loss lost because you know uh, conceptually you know, we can be dead in so many ways, um, and and things within this thing called life can die. Um, I mean, emotionally you can be dead. Uh, physically you can die, of course. We're familiar with that. But occupationally, socially, you know, um, and so you know, lost is loss. And, and um, recently I, I posted something and did some research about uh, based, you know, based on a thought for the day from uh, my lovely wife Dana who's, who uh, pointed out where a man's uh, treasure is, there will his heart be, right? And, and so I wanted to just kind of pull from that because for a lot of us, the, the pain, the extent of the pain or grief of loss has to do with where our hearts lie. The treasures of our heart. When we lose, when we lose something that means so much to us, we experience loss. And that in turn brings grief. And it could be um, tremendous. And it can impact us in, in ways that um, paralyze us. It paralyzes. We, we, many of us can't move forward. Many of us cannot move forward. Because of the devastation of loss. And so I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today to embrace an amazingly beautiful thing. I want you to embrace. I want to encourage you. I want to urge you to embrace 
an amazingly beautiful thing. Now, you know, an amazingly beautiful thing is usually seen in, you know, seen as beautiful first and thereafter is considered eternally or permanently beautiful depending on what it is. Okay, so, well, for instance, let me just use this for instance, a wedding cake. A wedding cake is seen as beautiful at first glance and may remain so for a short while until it is thereafter cut into for serving. Sooner or later, that cake is demolished. And, uh, you know, the, beautif the beauty of it is, is gone, you know. And maybe, maybe there's a beauty that's lasting in that everyone enjoyed it. And, and, and so when you see that cake and you see how it's no longer there, you know, perhaps the beauty is the beauty that comes after that is the enjoyment or the reflection of what joy it was in eating that cake. Right? And so, um, I mean, that's just one way of looking at it. Now, like if there's a, a beautiful painting, um, you know, that beautiful painting can be seen as beautiful at first glance and thereafter seen just as beautiful you know, for a much longer period of time, depending on how it is maintained. But when we think about death, when we think about death, however, it, it's not always seen as beautiful. It's not always seen as beautiful, particularly when we're talking about physical death, the grief that's, that's involved, you know, the grief that's involved. But death um, seen as beautiful is depending on circumstances or culture as well as personal view and it can also be seen as beautiful or not so beautiful based on religious or spiritual views spiritual views and so you know when we think about this thing when we think about death and all that's going on with that um, you know there's an article. There's an article that was written February uh, 2021 in the Country Navigator blog by Sue Bryant, who is an award-winning writer and editor specializing in global business, culture, and travel. And she notes uh, various perspectives on death and dying. And and so she, you know she brings up the point that um, first of all that death is viewed or marked around the world, you know, um, uh, how you say, um, not so much uh, as, a, um, as death, you know, like death is not, not necessarily the focus, but then, you know, um, the experience of the person or people, you know, um, who are dealing with that. You know, dealing with loss, and so um, the expression of grief differs based on cultures, the different cultures. And she talks about Korea. You know how uh, the Koreans, um, especially particularly these days, um, they will cremate um, the deceased. And they will use the ashes and, and make beads, colorful beads, which they don't hang around their neck, but they, they put on display in their homes, right? They put, and, and, and usually when you see it, it's in the home of the person who lost someone. And so when you think about that, you know, I mean, it's kind of give you a whole nother perspective, perhaps from, from the Western world. Now in China, in China, uh, let's think about white, the color color white. It's for mourning in China, not black as in, in most Western countries, right? Um, so you would be offending a Chinese person if you gave them white flowers. It would be inappropriate if you did that. And, and, and 
and when you think about the Buddhists, they they will mourn for a hundred days, a hundred days, where we might think you know seven days is enough. You know, we'll just give them give the person seven days off from the job as if that's enough. You know, for that person to get over or to get a handle on themselves from such a loss. And all of these things, I mean, there's points in the article about Japan, um, you know, who see, who views death as uh, liberation and acceptance, you know. Um, there's, there's things about, um, again, time, you know, whether there's a three-day festival or, or a 40-day festival. Um, there's points in there about Ghana, you know. Um, who uh, um, believe in the afterlife, you know, things like that, and they honor the uh, the deceased um, based on that person's interest or profession or status. They honor them with the with the coffin, with the design of the coffin. You know, the the coffin can be made to look like an airplane or a Porsche or a Coca Cola bottle. Or even uh, one note in the article says that a coffin can be made like a giant cigarette packet. And so, you know, you think about these um, various ways of, uh, or expressions um, based on the, on the experience of losing someone. Well, I want to share with you briefly from the Word of God when, it, when you know, when you think about Jesus, his perspective, his perspective on death and dying. The in John um, chapter twelve, um, some people, some Greek people, have came because there's a festival, and so they come to Philip and Andrew. You know, they they're looking for Jesus. They're wanting to speak with Jesus, and as uh, Philip and Andrew go to tell Jesus that these people are looking for him, right? Jesus makes this point. Um, I'll just start here, John 12 and 23 and 24. And Jesus answered them, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified and exalted. This is from the Amplified Version. He says in 24, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain, it never becomes more, but lives, and that's in that's uh, in parentheses. So here, um, it just it just one grain, it never becomes more, but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. It produces many more and produces a rich harvest. Now, Jesus is talking about himself here. This analogy is pointing to Jesus. It's pointing to Jesus who, um, who um, now is approaching this moment where he's going to be glorified and exalted. This amazingly beautiful thing has to do with Jesus dying. And so, so we we look at this thing, we look at this thing, and try to understand because we may be embracing the wrong perspective about death, and 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 thus experiencing a, a greater grief, a, a a paralyzing grief. That will not allow us to move forward. Will not allow us to live. Will not allow us to rejoice and be glad in this new day that God has given us. It will not allow us. Why? Because our perspective may be um, not so allowing. It will not be so allowing. You know, many of us... We suffer from the power of death and the grave. And in, in, in this perspective, 
what Jesus is pointing out here is that there there is so much more to to you know when when we when we embrace Jesus when we embrace Jesus when we embrace the word of God about the love of God who um, by which he gave his only begotten son to pay the price of of sin right when we embrace that when we believe and trust in God for that, when we hold on to that, our perspective about death and the grave, about death and dying, about all of that, our perspective changes from a paralyzing grief to a liberating hope, a liberating hope in Christ. A liberating hope that, that, as he says, it produces many more. Because we go on to tell this thing. We go on to live a life indicative of the hope that we have in Christ. And because we have that hope in Christ. Oh, man. Amen. We can rejoice and be glad. And we live that life. Because Paul, the Apostle Paul, he said, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. And wow, when you have that perspective, wow, when you live like that, when you live like that, the Bible says that we should let our light so shine that men will see our good works. And they will not, no, not glorify me, not glorify you, but glorify God. They will glorify God. They will give God the praise. Because of the mighty works that he's doing in us. Why? Because of what Christ did. And, and Christ is telling us here. That hey, you know what? When Christ died. When Christ died. Wow. And he rose again. What, what an amazingly beautiful thing. That's an amazing, amazingly beautiful thing. That this grain of seed, this divine appointed and anointed grain of seed fell into the ground and died. But guess what? He rose again. He rose. He rose. And just like that, that grain, that wheat grain, grain of wheat that fell in the ground and, and it died. And then from it produced more crop. It produced like they say right here, a rich harvest, whereby now the message, the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ is feeding people around the world. It's feeding so many people from generation to generation. It's feeding them hope. It's feeding them life. It's feeding them peace. It's feeding them comfort. It's feeding them strength. Feeding them what they need to be able to continue doing the work of the Lord so that in the day of his return, wow, in the day of his return, I'm just going to read a, a few few scriptures here. And we already talked about that at wheat falling, but let me, let me share with you. Uh, in, uh, this is in uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4. It says here, uh, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then he, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. We'll be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air. You see what I'm saying? Well, this death... This death with Christ is an amazingly beautiful thing because the end result is we go to meet him in the air. When we die with Christ through baptism, believing and trusting in God, right? When we die to ourselves, die to sin nature, when we die to that, we rise with Christ. We rise to a rich harvest in Christ. And, 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 and so that's what it's all about right there. It's about life. It's really not about death. It's really not about death. 
And that's what the perspective that we should have here is Jesus is saying, look, look, this, yeah, this uh, wheat, this grain of wheat dies, it falls to the ground, it has this, this is the reality, it has, to, this is ha has to happen, yes, it's reality, that this flesh, this thing that we live in, is going to die, that's the reality, but, the amazingly beautiful thing, when it's in Christ, when we're in Christ, the amazingly beautiful thing about Christ, about having life in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ being born again, about being born again, the amazingly beautiful thing is that we rise, we rise, we resurrect with Him to die in Christ, and we die once and for all to sin, and but we live eternally in Christ. Another verse of scripture here, um, when we when we look at it, another verse of scripture in uh, Romans, uh, in Romans six, um, starting at four, verse four. Therefore, we were buried with him uh, through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly, certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. It's a newness of life. It's a newness of life. We need not be paralyzed by the grief, by the, the, the uh, grip of death in the grave. We need not be like that. We need not be like that. Now look, I'm... I'm not saying it's an easy thing. No, I'm not saying it's an easy uh, it's an easy experience. I'm not saying that we won't miss um, our loved ones. I'm not saying that you get over it, you know, move on. No, I'm not speaking as to be so insensitive about that. But what I want to do is encourage you that no matter what the loss, whether it's whether it's health, whether it's occupation, whether it's a social thing, whether it's, you know, hey, turn to the Lord. Look to God. Look to God. Because where we find a loss of peace in Christ, we find a life of peace. Where we find a loss of relationship, family, in Christ, we find a, a life of relationship and family. Where we find a loss of hope in Christ, we find a life of hope. And, and that's what it's all about right there. That's what it's all about. I'm just wanting I'm just wanting to encourage you. I'm just wanting to encourage you. Look here. Lastly, I want to point out in 2 Timothy, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2. It says here, um, uh, this is about being strong in grace. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you uh, have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ, Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare Warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a, as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. All things... It, Basically, it goes down to, um, we go down to uh, verse 11. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. This is all about life. This is all about life. This whole death thing in Christ is an amazingly 
beautiful thing. Why? Because it ends in life. Yeah, that beautiful cake, wedding cake, that was so beautiful in display, once cut and passed out, served out, right? The beautiful thing is that everyone who partaked, uh, partook of that beautiful cake, they go away with a, a, a reflection of the taste of that beautiful cake. The experience of tasting that beautiful cake. The experience of participating in that beautiful wedding. They go away with that. Like that grain that fell to the ground. That cake can remain a whole cake and just stay there on the table by itself. But once... That cake dies in the sense that it's been cut and served to everyone in the wedding, right? You have this rich harvest of, of, a, of blessings that go out from the wedding to remember and to, to reflect on that beautiful cake that was at that wedding that was cut and served. Just like that grain that fell to the ground just like when you see beautiful flowers when you behold God's handiwork you know a beautiful flower at some point in time that petal is going to fall to the ground because that flower is going to die but the seed of that flower falls to the ground in nature it may be carried away by a bird it may be carried away by the wind but it goes on to be planted again and produce a, another wonderful aspect of God's handiwork. Perhaps another tree or a flower or, or like the mustard seed. It, 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 it produces a tree that's so big, although so small, right? Although singular, small, it produces a tree that's so big that all the birds can come and, 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 and sit and perch in that tree and find shelter and that's what we all do we find a place in Christ where we live where we have life and that's the encouragement that's the encouragement this amazingly beautiful thing about dying in Christ is that we live that we live amen that we live the Bible says just believe in Christ. For God so loved the world that whoever shall believe in Christ shall live, shall have eternal life. Believe in Christ. Believe in this amazingly beautiful thing. Amen. Amen. It's not hard. Hmm. It's a matter of faith. And the world will make it hard. And our, our own flesh bodies may make it hard. And our, our um, propensity to try to rationalize it may make it hard. But it's really a matter of believing. And the Bible says that if you have hard, a hard time with your faith, there's a, there's a place in there where the disciples say, Lord, increase our faith. God will help you. God will help you. Amen. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in this day. Look to God. Look to God. Amen. Look to the Lord. Look to Jehovah. Look to Yahweh. Look to Him. Look to Jah. Look to Him. Amen. Look to Him. Look to the one who created heaven and earth. Look to God, the true and living God, look to the only true and living God. Amen. And be blessed. Be blessed.